been playing our best and it's been showing uh, obviously we lost two in a row but just the way that we were playing wasn't great so we wanted to get back to who we are. Some ups and downs tonight but at the end of the game uh, showed exactly our identity moving the ball finding the open guy and uh, finishing the game strong. You told us before the game how you never lose confidence in your shot. There was a time there in the first half though where you were on the bench you'd missed a couple free throws missed a few threes and you had sort of a confused look on your face like you were thinking for a while. What were you thinking about and how did you and Clay end up getting off the schneid a little bit. I don't ever lose confidence. I was just uh, my assistant coach uh, Q was telling me to think about nothing <laughs> which I was trying to I was trying to do like don't worry about mechanics don't worry about what's going on in the last two or three games just shoot and uh, it obviously worked in the third quarter so um, it's the NBA season ups and downs you just got to stick with the program. How does this challenge feel going into the rest of the season or the rest of your time without KD you sort of have to embrace this new challenge of in the middle of a season taking on some new things. Yeah I mean uh, every year is different and you're going to be hit with uh, some obstacles and challenges along the way like you said and uh, we obviously love to have a full squad but um, as we finish out the regular season we got to answer the bell um, you know whoever suits up whoever's ready to play uh, get wins continue to get better because we we're not where we want to be going you know uh, going into the playoffs. So that's something that we need to focus on down the stretch. Thank you, Steph. Mike. Thank you, Israel. A tough schedule right now for Golden State. This five game eight swing, and then they got a big one next Saturday. We'll have it for you on NBA Saturday primetime, presented by Verizon Wireless, as the Warriors will face the Spurs in San Antonio. They play them twice more, both times in Texas. Our coverage will begin with ABC Countdown at 8 p.m. Eastern. Once again, our final score. From Madison Square Garden, the Warriors 112 and the Knicks 105. For producer Tim Corrigan, director Jimmy Moore, of course, for Mark Jeff in Israel, and our outstanding ABC crew, Mike Breen saying thanks so much for watching. Coming up next, ABC World News or your local news, except on the West Coast. Thanks for watching ESPN on ABC, home of the NBA Finals. Thomas on the move to the rim. Fios is not cable. We're wired differently. Maybe that's why we've been ranked highest in customer satisfaction by J.D. Power four years in a row. And now you can love Fios, too. Get our best offer of the year, 150 meg internet with equal upload and download speeds, TV and phone, all for $79.99 per month for the first year with a two-year agreement. Plus, get HBO for a year and free multi-room DVR service for two years. Go to GetFios.com or call 1-888-GET-FIOS. Get the best. Get Fios. Hey, Metro PCS and Cricket customers, tired of family plans with data limits? Get Boost Mobile's best family plan ever. Four lines with unlimited gigs of high-speed data for just $100 a month. Switch and get more data on our crazy fast nationwide network. Visit BoostMobile.com. I say, oh, what a beautiful morning, yeah, yes, what a wonderful day, y'all look out there. Sevens on your side at wjla.com slash call for action. Welcome to World News Tonight. Breaking news, President Trump accusing Obama of spying on him. Tonight, the FBI director calling that false. The president insisting his phones were tapped at Trump Tower. But when pressed, Team Trump not so sure. If this happened, Martha, if, this if, would if, if. if. <laughs> Brian Ross standing by with the new details. Fire and ice, firefighters battling high winds and freezing cold. This dangerous weather killing a mother and her four children. The hazards at home and on the road. Fighting back, the chilling video of the alleged midnight assault. A masked serial sex offender stalking, then attacking a female hotel worker. What she did that led to his capture. Charity scam? The child 
fighting for his life and the strangers accused of using his photo to raise money for themselves. And true colors, the little boy, the high tech glasses and the incredible moment when his whole world changes. From ABC News, this is ABC World News Tonight. And good evening. Thanks for joining us on this Sunday. I'm Tom Yamas, and we begin with that breaking news, a serious setback to President Trump tonight. After he called on Congress to investigate his claim that President Obama spied on him. Tonight, the FBI director is asking the Justice Department to speak out, rejecting that claim as false. President Trump a short time ago boarding Air Force One on his way back to the White House after a weekend at Mar-a-Lago. His friendship with President Obama forged just after the election, now turning into a bitter personal fight. Aides to the former president are strongly denying there was any wiretapping. And tonight it appears the FBI director is backing them up. Here's ABC's chief investigative correspondent, Brian Ross. The actual source of the president's stunning claim, the FBI bugged Trump Tower on the orders of President Obama, remains a mystery tonight. But late today, word that the FBI director, James Comey, has weighed in. A senior Justice Department official told ABC News Comey has asked the Justice Department to publicly reject the president's statements as false. The only White House official to speak publicly today, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, appeared on the ABC News program this week and tried to change the subject and call for an investigation when Martha Raddatz pressed her for an answer about the source. Let's look into this. If this happened, if this is accurate, this is the biggest but, but overreach and the biggest let's scandal. Look into this. The president of the United States is accusing the former president of wiretapping him. I think that this is again something that if this happened, Martha, if this if, would if if <laughs> I, I agree. Why is the president saying it did happen? Look, I think he is going off of information that he's seen that has led him to believe uh, that this is a very real potential. But the president's series of Twitter messages were not about the potential, rather that the wiretaps actually did happen. He wrote, terrible, just found out that Obama had my wires tapped in Trump Tower just before the victory. Nothing found. This is McCarthyism. As president, Mr. Trump has unlimited access to the country's greatest secrets. But tonight it seems increasingly clear that he instead relied heavily on questions raised in a Fox News report Friday night. Are you concerned on the flip side that the Obama administration may have been surveilling members of the Trump campaign? And on the conservative Breitbart website, which Friday highlighted a conspiracy-loving radio talk show host. How many of Trump's people were eavesdropped on. Look, I think the bigger thing is uh, you guys are always telling us to take the media seriously. Well, we are today. The media speculation was all focused on possible Russian connections to Trump and whether alleged collusion with Putin's spies during the campaign, in fact, did lead to an FBI wiretap. Today, the former DNI, the director of national intelligence, James Clapper, said Trump was never a target of a wiretap. For the part of the national security apparatus that I oversaw as DNI, there was no such wiretap activity mounted against uh, the president-elect at the time or as a candidate or against his campaign. And Brian joins us now live in studio. Brian, this is a highly unusual move by the FBI director to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the president. What are you hearing is behind this? Well, we're hearing the director is extremely unhappy. Not only is he saying that Trump tweets are false, but they make it appear the FBI acted illegally, and he's demanding the Justice Department defend the integrity of the Bureau and his agents. But so far, no public statement. Nothing yet. All right, Brian, thank you. Next tonight, the reaction coming into the President Trump's claims of wiretapping, members of Congress weighing in, and tomorrow, the Senate also expecting to hear more from Attorney General Jeff Sessions about his meetings with the Russian ambassador. The investigation of the Trump campaign's alleged ties to Russia still churning in the background. ABC's David Wright is in Palm Beach tonight. Tonight, with the president back in Washington, the White House is bracing for a fight. Members of the president's own party are openly skeptical about that unsubstantiated claim that President Obama tapped the phones in Trump Tower. I've never heard that. Uh, allegation made before by anybody. It would probably be helpful if he gave more information, but it also might be helpful if he just didn't comment further and allowed us to do our work. Democrats are downright critical. I think this is just a distraction to distract from 
this very, very serious um, interference by a foreign power. Some of them now calling for an investigation of Trump's tax returns to determine if there's any sign of a Russia connection there. But if it's true, it's obviously extremely serious. It was Senator Al Franken's question that tripped up Attorney General Jeff Sessions at his confirmation hearings. I did ha not have communications with the Russians, um, and I'm unable to comment on it. Sessions now admits that was not accurate. In retrospect, if I should have slowed down and said, but I did meet one Russian official a couple of times. Tomorrow, the Attorney General owes the Judiciary Committee a full explanation of why he failed to tell them the truth. If he lied knowingly, then he committed perjury. At the start of this weekend, the president erupted in anger at his top aides in the Oval Office, according to sources, demanding they step up their game. This weekend, hundreds of Trump supporters held rallies around the country, many of them willing to give the president the benefit of the doubt, even on the wiretapping claim. I think there's validity in Mr. Trump's uh, comments. And my initial reaction was that if he just said it off the top of his head to lash out, I said, oh, no, now the left is going to have a field day with this. Trump supporters out in force showing their support. David joins us now live. David, we saw that heated Oval Office moment in your story. Any additional fallout from that exchange? Well, the White House is cautioning us not to read too much into who's in or who's out based on who ended up coming down here to Palm Beach this weekend. They say that the bottom line on that meeting is that the president was expressing his frustration about messaging and that his top aides heard that message loud and clear. Tom? David Wright in Palm Beach for us tonight. David, thank you. Next, millions of people feeling this weekend's bitter chill. For some, it's the coldest temperatures all year. Staying warm and the risk of a fire, a real challenge to firefighters. ABC's Eva Pilgrim on the battle to save lives. We have a two-story commercial trying to locate the fire. Blustering winds fanning the seven-alarm fire in Queens, New York. Two firefighters injured, dozens turned out in the bitter cold overnight. And in Union City, New Jersey, this block covered in ice after a deadly blaze. Embers igniting this historic church, its steeple collapsing. The flames are just out of control because of the wind. In Massachusetts, this ice a reminder of another frigid firefight. A second alarm for the town of Warwick. Firefighters facing negative five degree wind chills, a mother and four children dying inside. We couldn't get near the house, it was too hot. Fire authorities investigating tonight if the fire started because of a wood stove. And in Massachusetts, 40 mile an hour gusts toppling this 100 foot pine, crushing this car and killing the couple inside. It was just demolished. And the cold temperatures blamed for this mess at New York's LaGuardia Airport. A frozen pipe bursting, passengers rerouted around the water pouring from the ceiling. Back here in Queens, at the time of the fire, temperatures were in the single digits, and firefighters were facing 25 mile an hour winds. Tom? Eva, that fire destroyed absolutely everything at sight. Thank you. Let's get right now to senior meteorologist Rob Marciano. Rob, it is freezing out there. It is another cold night, Tom, for sure. But we're going to see things warm up in response to a very strong storm that's hitting the west right now. Look at all these alerts. We've got winter storm warnings and a lot of wind warnings. We've got uh, wind that's blowing dust in Vegas and winds that could gust to 50 miles an hour east of Denver tomorrow. We'll spin this thing with the low elevation snow tonight. Critical fire danger across the plains again tomorrow, even more so than today. And we had a number of fires today. And then we'll look for severe storms breaking out, maybe from Minneapolis, more so down towards Arkansas. Enhanced risk of damaging winds and maybe a tornado there. And the heat pumps up. We'll see 60 degrees in Chicago, 70 in St. Louis, and near 80 degrees in Oklahoma City, fueling some of those storms. Wild swings so far for this month of March. Tom? All right, we look forward to that warm weather. Rob, thanks so much. We want to turn out to a manhunt in Mississippi. Three inmates found to be missing from the Hines County Jail near Jackson this morning. All three awaiting trial on charges from armed robbery to burglary to having a concealed weapon. One also already convicted of armed robbery. Inmates and jailers are being questioned. Now to the terrifying moments for a woman alone working the night desk at a hotel. Surveillance footage, take a look, revealing a masked intruder allegedly lurking in the halls then zeroing in on her. What she did that may have saved her life. ABC's Gloria Riviera with that video, and we want to let you know some might find it disturbing. A